Are you starting to get bored of printing benchies over and over and over again? Is resin a little too messy and you're worried about the chemicals? Why not try something new and give subtractive manufacturing a shot? So what is subtractive manufacturing? In essence, it's the exact opposite of additive manufacturing. With additive manufacturing, which if you're familiar with 3D printers, you know how they work, you're adding material to create your final object. With a subtractive manufacturing machine, you are removing stock to create your final model. Now, there are many different types of subtractive manufacturing machines. Most of the time, you refer to these as mills, engravers, routers, CNC machines, bridge ports, etc. There's multiple different types of machines that fall under that blanket. Now, the machine we're going to be looking over today is the 3018 Pro. I received this unit from Banggood for testing and evaluation. I reached out to them when I started designing my own CNC machine, which if you want to follow along the process with that, make sure you are subscribed to the channel and ring that bell. But to help get myself ready for when that machine finally gets built, I wanted something that I can practice my machining skills on. Something relatively inexpensive, lightweight, compact, that I could use to get experience when it comes to generating CNC tool paths and sort of get used to the process of using subtractive manufacturing. Now the 3018 Pro is a very attractive machine for those that are looking to get their feet wet in CNC machining. It's got a very low price point, it's a very simple machine, it's lightweight, and it can easily fit on your standard desk. So you're not taking up a whole garage, you don't need any extra power sources, it's a simple plug and play machine, and it's very simple to operate. Now I assembled this machine during a live stream, and when it comes to the assembly of it, it is a relatively straightforward process. The instructions that do come with it are relatively simple, especially when it comes to the electronics. But if you've built a 3D printer before, this may not seem too unfamiliar to you. The instructions do call out screw locations and sizes. And really the only snag I had is when it came to plugging in the motors is that the Y motor was moving in the opposite direction. I simply corrected this by swapping the order of the wires. Now, when it comes to controlling the machine, it is relatively simple. It may seem familiar to those that have operated a 3D printer before, where you can move the tool head and the X, Y, and Z axis. However, some things are a little bit different. For example, with this machine, there are no end stops. So once you turn the machine on and connect to it, you will be able to move the tool head around in the X, Y, Z without having to home the machine. So what you're going to do and how this machine operates is after you fix whatever you're going to be engraving or machining to the bed, you're going to move your tool head to your desired zero point. Before you do any cuts or engraving, you are going to have to move the tool head to your desired XYZ zero location. Z is usually based off of the work surface itself, and the X and Y is based off the starting location of where you're going to be working from. And then you're going to zero out your X, Y, and Z zero in Gerbil control before you send the G code to the controller. Now do take care, however, there are no limits in this machine, so it is very easy to drive the tool head or the bed beyond its possible limits, and especially when you do have a cutter in the spindle, if you try to drive it down into the bed, you do risk crashing the tool head, and with a cutter in it, you do risk breaking that cutter and send it flying. So I do highly recommend that anytime you're operating this machine, you are wearing safety glasses of some sort. So the machine is advertised as an engraver, and it does come with some test files that you can use to ensure that everything is set up properly. The first thing I ran here was just a simple Autobots logo, and this is included with the downloaded files, and this was cut into some MDF using the supplied V-bits. It's cut quite well, although it did take a little bit of time. This was about a 45 minute engrave. Now the next thing I went and did was try out some engraving in some aluminum. So I had a scrap piece of aluminum extrusion here, and I decided to try out some letter engraving. I used Carbide Create to create this toolpath, and while there is some room for optimization, I am impressed with the final result. And lastly, I did try engraving in some brass as well. Now, this did prove to be a little bit difficult for the included V-bits. They had a tendency to break the very tip off. So if you do plan on engraving in harder materials, such as brass or even doing a lot of aluminum engraving, I would recommend looking for and getting some higher quality engraving bits. Now the next thing I attempted to machine was some quarter inch thick plexiglass and I used some double sided tape to affix this to the bed on the 3018 Pro. 
I used a two millimeter single flute carbide end mill for this. And I will recommend that if you do plan on trying more machining with this machine than engraving, that you do get a set of single flute carbide end mills. With a machine such as this, I find they cut a lot better and they do come recommended from others that have these style of machines. Now, of course, there is room for optimizing the tool paths and speeds and feeds. Again, I am very new when it comes to generating CNC tool paths. However, the end results are quite well. It did cut out a nice clean circle and hexagon out of the plexiglass, and I used Carbide Create to generate these tool paths. Now, the last thing I machined here was the Voron logo in some MDF using a three millimeter ball end mill. This toolpath was generated by a friend who also has this machine. I'm not quite well versed enough with Fusion 360 CAM software yet, but I am getting better. So I didn't really trust myself to generate one of these toolpaths yet. But this was machined using the 3D adaptive uh, toolpathing in Fusion 360. And the end results came out quite clean, especially in the MDF. It cuts cleanly. It wasn't any burning or gumming up of the tool head. So those were the first tests that I have done with this machine. I haven't really done much more testing because I wanna spend some time getting used to programming CNC and generating proper tool paths. Plus I'm gonna to have to look into proper speeds and feeds and do a lot more testing to make sure this machine's really dialed in before I move on to more complicated machining. Now with this machine, it is advertised as a CNC engraver. So please don't buy one of these machines expecting to be hogging out aluminum or throwing blocks of P20 tool steel on here. This machine is really at home when it comes to engraving and machining plastics and softer material. So I do plan on trying to machine some printer components out of Delrin on this machine. I think that would be a great use of a machine such as this, especially for those that want to get more involved in subtractive manufacturing and want to learn how to properly program and run a CNC machine before moving on to bigger machines, or if they just want to see if this is something they are interested in and don't want to sink the money into a full size CNC machine. Now, when it comes to the machine itself, it is a very entry level machine. The spindle itself is lacking in power compared to other desktop CNC machines. The motors are for the most part, unlabeled NEMA 17s of questionable power. And the controller board is an old eight bit gerbil controller board. There is quite a bit of flex in the tool head and it's not the most rigid machine. So again, if you are trying to cut harder materials, you probably are going to run into issues. However, with my limited experience with it so far, I do see where there is some room for easy improvements. I do have some larger motors on the shelf that I'll probably swap into here. I can see some places where some additional bracing could easily be added to help with the rigidity. And I already have a 20,000 RPM spindle on hand that I will be swapping this stock 10,000 RPM spindle with to see if it's worth adding that in and if there's any actual improvements when it comes to machining with it. So I hope you enjoyed this quick overview of the 3018 Pro. Again, if you would like to get one of these machines yourself, I do have an affiliate link from Banggood in the description below. 3018 style of CNC machine is quite common. There's multiple different manufacturers and brands of it. So it can be had from Amazon, Banggood, AliExpress, and most other vendors that sell that sort of thing. As always, if you have any questions, make sure you ask them in the comments below. If you want to help support the channel, the content I create, and the things I do, I do have links in the description as well. I hope you enjoyed this first look at the 3018 Pro CNC. I do plan on doing some more content with CNC in the future, especially along with my CNC build that I'm currently designing. So I hope you follow along with all that. And as always, thank you for watching and have a nice day.